Hello everybody and welcome back to a little series regarding orchids for beginners and how to get you started on your orchid growing hobby. And I have pulled out some orchids that I have in my collection that would actually be quite common in your garden centers, some in the supermarkets, big box stores. I just wanted to talk briefly through them to give some insight. If uh, you're watching this because you want to see what is an easy grower and when you see it in your garden center and you want to bring it home. And um, so I hope that this is a video that will then help you make a determined decision of which ones to buy. And uh, if you're here and you are already an avid orchid grower, well, thank you very much for watching. Let's see if you have any additional suggestions for all the beginners that might be watching this video and uh, put, your comment, put them in the comments below. Other suggestions that are easy growers, that are easy to find. And I'm only targeting orchids that are not in um, nurseries, online nurseries. The ones that you see regularly when you're out and about doing your shopping. So basically, <clears throat> the most common one is obviously the Phalaenopsis. Very easy to grow. You can grow them in bark or in organic media. But these you will find all the time and there will be a reporting video of one of mine coming up soon. But as a suggestion, these little Phalaenopsis, they bloom abundantly and they're quite easy to grow and they don't require that much light. Then next to it, you will also find like Oncidium types. Anything with a pseudobulb and a couple of leaves coming out, these egg-shaped pseudobulbs down here, they have blooms that very resemble this shape as you see here. Most of them are fragrant. They're also quite easy growers. They are fun to have in the house. They require a little bit more light than the Phalaenopsis, but they don't need any extra special treatment or fancy, you know, humidifiers and all that. Abundant water, good fertilizer, and then you get a bloom show every year when a new growth matures. Some bulbs will put out two spikes, some bulbs only one spike, but they are easy growers. And behind that, you will see these kinds as well, these orchids here that are like, um, they come fall into like the Brassavola cross. I will put up a picture um, to show you the shape of the blooms that you should be looking for, that give you an indication, as well as the leaves, of when you see them, for example, as a bag baby. You will see these shaped leaves in a bag baby. These are crosses and very, you know, hybridized types of orchids that are super easy to grow as well. They don't need any ex exceptional humidifying, any exceptional super duper light. They don't need to be uh, cultured in any way that is different to just your normal house grown plants. Light is always better for more blooming. So if you can give them a stronger light, that's great but you don't have to supplement with artificial light in order to make these bloom for you. I will put up a picture and then you can judge by the shape of the blooms when you see them in your shops. Here in this one, they're called Dendrobium nobilis. They're very complex hybrids. Now I will put up a picture of what you should be looking for as far as the plant is concerned, because as you can see, mine is coming to the end of its days regarding the canes but that is normal for this plant it will drop the leaves at, in winter and then you don't have to worry that you've done something wrong it is what we call a deciduous orchid but then it's on those canes that the blooms will develop the following season so the picture of the plant would serve you as a reference these are very easy to grow they enjoy a lot of light and they can actually live outside from temperatures as low as five degrees celsius and then in the summer as much light as you can give it so you can actually place this one outside and not worry about it if you can maintain temperatures not lower than five degrees celsius the other ones that i was mentioning just to put that in as a thought the other ones 15 degrees Celsius, I wouldn't push it any lower than that as well. So there's an exception here that can live outside 
most of your year if you're in a climate that permits five degrees Celsius minimum temperatures in the winter. You will also see a lot of these cattleya types, very strappy leaves, it's upright. Sometimes you have two leaves coming out of the bottom of a suitable. Now, I'm only putting this one in as an example so that you can make a reference with regards to the foliage as to what you would see in a bag baby. Or if you have it in bloom, then you reference the, the foliage as well. And these are super easy to grow. They can, in the summer, live outside. These are cattleyas. You can have a minimum temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. But outside, lots of light. Try not to be too hard on the direct sun, but they will bloom for you and it is not a difficult one to grow. In the winter, you can bring it inside. And then we have another two examples of dendrobiums that are relatively common in the big box stores, garden centers, etc. I'm just going to reference the canes so that you can see what you can be looking for and not be put off because it looks a little bit different to what you're usually used to with the Phalaenopsis orchids. Here is like a Dendrobium bariota, and if I go in, you can see how the canes look like bamboo. And that is absolutely an easy grower, and it grows very vigorously. This also in my climate in the Mediterranean lives outside and it tolerates temperatures to 5 degrees Celsius and then it just stays out all winter for me. There is something to be said that if it's not growing any new growths then you shouldn't be watering it as much because it won't be needing it. But those are details. When we get to that point there will be a video on that as well. Here Next to it is another dendrobium type, just to reference the canes. You can see that they're a bit more narrow at the bottom. This is a Roy Tokunaga, dendrobium Roy Tokunaga. It's super long lasting blooms, super long. So you see how the canes are shaped, narrow at the bottom, a bit more bulbous. If you see that in your big box store and you're interested because these blooms are so fascinating and um, this has now been in bloom about three months then uh, by all means don't be afraid you can get it and then perfect example here as well to look out for are the new what's the we call new growths and they are a good indicator that the plant is healthy and is on its way to becoming a specimen plant so, mentioning new growth, I just want to zoom back over slowly to the cattleya. Our example here with the strappy leaves. And you can see on the bottom, right there, there's a new growth coming. And usually in the big box stores, if you have the bag babies or something, normally they will have little growths like this coming. If you see that on an orchid and you want to bring it home, it's a very, very advantageous time to buy that orchid because that means it is an active growth and then it can adapt to your climate much more quickly. So again, as I mentioned in the beginning, for orientation purposes, if you see these in your stores, don't be put off. These are so easy to grow. These are examples. It doesn't always have to be a Phalaenopsis, even though they are absolutely beautiful to grow. But it can also be a Dendrobium nobile, anything Oncidium, and anything that has a Brassavola cross in it. Even if it says hybrid, that doesn't matter. These are super, super easy and very, very rewarding. I hope that this was some kind of a quick introduction insight into can I buy it, can I take care of it, and I hope that this is actually something that will kickstart your orchid collection. Let me know in the comments below if you have other suggestions, other recommendations, and uh, I'd be happy to hear about it. Thank you very, very much for watching, I really appreciate it, and good luck, bye.